Uh, hello, everyone. Wow, the poems have been so amazing. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Phil and Marsha on Friday. Always wonderful and so good to see you, Jessica, and be here in this space. Um, so I'm going to read two poems. The first one is from the most recent edition of Askew. And um, so the poem started, I, I had a baby. <laughs> and I was sort of horrified by the domestication process that happens to children that like you find yourself as a parent, you know, <laughs> imposing <laughs> on your children. And um, so, so this, this new book kind of explores that, explores what, you know, explores misbehaving and the unruly and um, in all these different ways. Um, so, so this first poem is called How to Be Bad. And, and, and the poems sort of shuck off a lot of like that composed feeling, you know, they, they, they don't have punctuation and um, they are unruly themselves. Um, <laughs> You use the pink sponge for the counter, blue sponge for the dishes, Play-Doh separated by color, sit down and eat your soup, the daily serving of leafy greens, the daily act, the routines, so far, far from your long adolescence, the boyfriend's stolen car, the one you lived in, it's just a photograph now. You weren't so happy, sort of stoned really, lost I guess, but you were so bad. You drove thousands of miles on smoke and the twins you punched in the back in grade school, they kept chanting it over and over and you ran to the bathroom and hid on the public school toilet, the principal's heels, they're always clicking down some hallway headed right for you. Everyone saw, but you couldn't keep it in. You couldn't keep from punching your left-handed baseball mitt over and over, and you're swinging now with your child, the girl through which you keep remembering, the tisk, the woman, your mother, those big glasses from the 70s, and you have charcoal and peanut butter all over your face. You can't sit still. You need so much, but you're old now and it's story time, and the mother yanks her son's wrist because he's standing in front of the stuffed raccoon, and you couldn't help it either, and you watch the boy. He wants bugs and trains and mud. He doesn't cry like you want to, no. He walks dutifully behind his mother's bright blonde po ponytail bobbing toward the exit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, and this, some of my friends have heard this one, but it's new and it's fun. Um, it's, and it's the felons. <laughs> um, okay. The felons who speak regularly at 12-step meetings teach us to shove an arm into the mouth of a rot Rottweiler if attacked from the side. They teach us that if you've killed a man, you make amends by raising your grandchildren, that the kids will play in a small fenced yard that you button the skinny child's shirt until he can do it for himself. The felons who speak regularly at 12-step meetings teach us not to reach over a man's plate for the salt shaker. We call the one with new white teeth beaver. We call the felons who speak at 12-step meetings names like Pegleg Steve and Bloodbath Bob. We are 20-year-old girls sitting in a line on metal chairs. We are always lighting cigarettes. We are girls who have spent the summer pulling cold trays of french fries from the trash to eat. Girls who travel by Greyhound. We steal hair dye. You wouldn't believe what has happened to us. At the 12-step meetings, the felons teach us to aim like we're hunting wild javelina. They teach us how to instantly pull arrows from our quiver, that recovery is a muscle memory, that relapse is a hoofed mammal chittering in the shadows. The felons say, if you hang around the barbershop long enough, you're going to get a haircut. <laughs> the felons who speak regularly at 12-step meetings feast on salmon roe, octopus, daikon radish, kimchi, fennel spare ribs, beef bourguignon, tabbouleh, crab cakes, and chicken satay. They hammer together coops for rabbits and tortoises before their bodies begin to grow quiet. As the years pass, the felons who speak regularly at 12-step meetings learn to hold our new babies lightly. They teach us that even violent men eventually grow small in hospital beds. 
They ask for honey ice cream to be spooned onto their dry tongues. When we throw open their curtains and our thick heels click, click across the room, they ask us to slow down a little bit, will ya? The felons who speak regularly at 12-step meetings teach us that the urges may never go away and that there is no love without acceptance. Eventually, the felons lose hair and they lose children. They lose toolboxes and tax statements, 401ks and regular erections. The felons who speak regularly at 12-step meetings teach us that a man's strength must move inward that he will look off into the corner of the room, that he will surrender even his body. The felons who speak regularly at 12-step meetings die quietly while foxes flickers on the TV. They teach us how the morphine dream pulls you by an umbilical cord through deep space. They speak their mother's names, the felons do. A young Jodie Foster chases her life while the felons unzip themselves from this great longing. Thank you.